It might be the most dangerous job in the world. Flying MiGs for Ukraine's Air Force. In skies where they're outgunned and outnumbered by Russia's fighter jets. Newsy sat down with a Ukrainian fighter pilot who asked us to identify him by his call sign. Juice, it's, it's my call sign. Given to him by the American pilots who trained him. How deadly has this war been for Ukraine's Air Force? Unfortunately, we have uh, a lot of uh, losers during this war, actually due to our technical disadvantages. My unit lost a few guys as well during the first two weeks. He says sometimes one jet will act as a decoy to attract Russian missiles. It's too dangerous, but we need to do these uh, types of missions. Of course, our guys are ready to die for that because they are supporting, they are supporting our ground units on the front line just to secure uh, the attack jets uh, on the low altitudes. That sounds like a suicide mission. Almost. Uh, almost. Almost a suicide uh, mission. But uh, of course we are maneuvering, so we are just uh, trying to, to, to create some tricks against them and just to force them to shoot these missiles from the largest uh, distances. Until recently, the role of Ukraine's Air Force has been largely invisible. But this week, it released a video giving a rare look at a new potent weapon. The Ukrainian MiG-29 pilot shot footage of combat operations, disclosing what had previously only been suspected, that Ukraine has adapted American high-speed anti-radiation missiles, known as HARM missiles, to fire from their Soviet MiGs, something no other Air Force in the world has done. Fortunately, we, uh, we received uh, the harm uh, missiles from the United States and uh, we used them effectively to, uh, to destroy the uh, ground-based air defense uh, sites of, of the Russian troops and trying to penetrate them to engage their ground uh, troops and ground objects. At the start of their country's counteroffensive this week, Ukrainians were captivated by a rare video on social media of their fighter pilots firing missiles in the skies over Kherson. It could be a sign of Ukraine's success in taking out Russian air defenses, which until now have made frontline air support missions too risky. It's very dangerous for us because Russians uh, unfortunately have the great advantage in technologies and uh, in quantity. They have much more uh, powerful uh, radars, uh, much much better missiles. Uh, they could shoot you um, from lo much larger distances. What's the most frightening experience you've had in the air? You're trying to to find the cruise missile, uh, which is flying uh, to your to your city, and you're not able to do that because of your radar, because of your systems on board, and you are understanding that it will kill people. Have you been in dogfights? No, uh, actually it, it, it's the 21st century. Uh, dogfights are very not, uh, not common. They're far more likely to be shot out of the sky from afar by an enemy that does not need to engage close up. Superior Russian technology allows them to target the Ukrainian pilots from beyond visual range, a deadly technological advantage. With Ukrainian pleas for Western jets refused so far, Ukrainian fighter pilots took the rare step of launching a public crowdsource campaign called Buy Me a Fighter Jet. Buy me a fighter jet. It will help me to protect my sky, fill the Russian planes that bomb my land, kill my friends and destroy our homes and everything I have ever known. If we have the modern fighter jets, we will save more people, we will save more cities, we will save more ground units and uh, we will win this war much quicker. Would you shoot down more Russian jets? Definitely. First of all, much more cruise missiles. If the U.S. were to give you an F-15, how quickly could you learn how to fly it? Our estimated term is um, three to six months. A dream of a top gun whose fighter jet is his entire life. 
Are you married? Do you have children? No, no, I'm single with no children, I hope. Uh, <laughs> you hope? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a pretty usual fighter pilot and stuff, so. Nothing usual about his mission, though. Outgunned, too few planes, flying on a wing and a prayer, hoping to survive, and just maybe turn the tide of war. In the first day of the counteroffensive, Ukrainian officials say that their Air Force launched 15 concentrated strikes in different areas. This is clearly a new day for Ukraine's Air Force, a much more prominent role than they've had before, Chance. And Jason, we're hearing today the IAEA inspectors, they've made it to the town of Zaporizhia. Do we know how long the inspection is going to take, what they're looking for? So the 14-member team from the International Atomic Energy Agency set out this morning from Kyiv, even though overnight last night there was more shelling around the plant. Now, they've made it to Zaporizhia. That's the city that's near the plant, and they're overnighting there. The plan is for them to set foot on the plant's campus tomorrow. The head of the mission says that they're going to be there for a few days, and they're actually hoping to establish a permanent presence there but that's not been agreed to by the Russians yet. He said he's brought along the best and the brightest when it comes to nuclear safety and security. And he said going there is not risk free, but something that they need to do. Assuming they successfully access the plant, the next question, will they get full access? Tonight, Ukraine's intelligence ministry posted on Telegram the accusation that Russia is forcing employees of the plant to create the picture that the Kremlin wants the IAEA to see. And they said that some workers who the Russians didn't trust have gone missing. Chance? Mm. Everyone's anxious to hear what they find, what they're allowed to see. Jason Bellini tonight in Ukraine. Thanks.